A narcissist puts you in a state of psychological paralysis. They hijack your psyche and fill it with irrational phobias, fears that do not make any sense. They turn you into a personality type that becomes afraid of facing life. How do they do so? We'll find that out in today's episode. I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to my channel. The topic for today's episode is seven paralyzing phobias a narcissist leaves you with. Before I get started with number one here is a quick announcement. The booking for workshop on how to heal after narcissistic abuse is on. This workshop will help you understand how surviving narcissistic abuse impacts every aspect of your life and then it will teach you how to use that understanding to become whole again. If you want to book your spot at an early, early bird prize, the link is in the description or you can click the i button above. The workshop only happens once every two years, so don't miss your chance. Number one, cheerophobia, the fear of happiness. When you are with a narcissist, what is that one emotion you feel continuously, all the time? It's deep sadness. And that sadness shows up as anxiety. It shows up as panic, hypervigilance, and in all other ways. That becomes your reality. That becomes the only thing you experience 24 seven. Hope becomes an alien thing to experience. And whenever you expect things to change, the narcissist makes sure they happen the opposite way to disappoint you. And that is what develops this phobia. You do not expect yourself to be happy because you have not been able to successfully be happy because of them. A time comes in such a relationship, be it with a parent or a partner, when you accept unhappiness as your constant companion. Your brain fails to think of something else and that is the reason why even after leaving the narcissist, happiness becomes a very difficult emotion to experience. You cannot fully step into that state of being because your brain cannot accept the fact that it's not going to be ruined by somebody. It's not going to be destroyed by that narcissist. The perception is th of threat is always there. Oh, if I let myself be happy for real, something bad is going to happen. Something is going to destroy it. So it's better not to even think of being happy. It's better to alienate that concept and stay in the state of anxiety because I know how to navigate it. Number two, soteriophobia, fear of dependency. You depended on that narcissist physically, psychologically, emotionally, and probably financially as well. What came out of it? Nothing but absolute terror. It was weaponized against you. First, they made you feel safe to depend on them fully. And then they used that dependency against you. They created this bond and then made it your responsibility to save it. How? By making you think you are the problem or you are creating the problems. They gaslit you into thinking that you are destroying the relationship as a consequence of which you took the burden of responsibility and started fixing everything. They made promises like, I'll be there for you when you need me the most. I will take care of you emotionally. I will fulfill your needs. What happened later? They broke every single promise. Not even one was fulfilled. How will you not fear depending on somebody? And this fear can impact your relationships after the narcissist a lot. Because the, the thought of fully going in and becoming vulnerable gives you massive anxiety. The truth is, the phobia that we're talking about right now is a trauma response. Your brain is trying to protect you from getting taken advantage of. Number three, atikophobia, fear of failure. 
you constantly try to please the narcissist but were you able to successfully do it never you were not and how did that make you feel like a failure you tried to fix the situation change the circumstances were you able to do so no you weren't how did that make you feel like a failure you constantly tried to meet those standards set by your narcissistic parent hit that goal but it was a moving target how did that make you feel like a failure so how would you not feel like a failure that narcissist put you down belittled berated and humiliated you why well you were not performing as per their expectations those expectations were unrealistic in nature that's a different thing but you were never able to be the ideal person they saw you of course that perception of yours was delusional but you were never able to satiate them what did that do to you that made you feel like a failure and that's why whenever you try to accomplish something make a move in your life that fear paralyzes you because it paralyzed you back then number 4 isolophobia fear of rejection how did that narcissist punish you by rejecting you how did they reject you by giving you silent treatment by stonewalling you how did that make you feel abandoned and neglected what thoughts did that trigger in your mind i am the cause i am the problem i need to fix it how by pleasing them by justifying their behavior by giving them a lot more room to breathe because i take all the space and that developed this fear of being abandoned oh i do not want to be rejected because that makes you feel like you have no control whatsoever in the relationship or over your life a lot of survivors who struggle with this fear are not able to take a break after leaving a narcissist they jump from one person to the other which makes them think am i a narcissist because a narcissist moves on very quickly but i'm not behaving like a narcissist i just can't just just be with myself it's too much to deal with this fear of rejection makes me feel totally worthless and that is when they end up with another narcissist and the cycle repeats number 5 sociophobia fear of social interactions that narcissist either shamed you publicly or isolated you from others they stole away your social skills would you believe that they destroyed your self esteem your trust in yourself they changed your self concept and impacted the levels of your self worth now you find it really difficult to recognize who you are what your values are what you stand for and so on as a consequence of which you find it hard to interact with others you get triggered very easily you're hyper conscious hyper aware and hyper attuned to these people because you do not want to make a mistake you do not want them to judge you and that is what leads to this discomfort uncertainty kills you you do not want to be around people where you have to you know hyper analyze the situations and and try to predict what is going to happen next and that's why it has become a threat for you you want to go out there you want to meet new people but the effort that it requires it just makes you feel really tired just the thought of doing it sociophobia can impact your employability because one needs to be interactive one needs to know how to present him or herself to get a job if you're not able to do it then that is indirect financial abuse of the narcissist what is financial abuse using money to abuse you if you're not able to earn how will you be able to support yourself and that triggers a major crisis in your life number 6 dosophobia fear of receiving praise were you ever truly praised by that narcissistic parent or partner no you were not they might have praised you in front of others but who were they to you in private when nobody was watching critical they were judgmental they 
never accepted you for who you are. And that praise was mixed with aggression. There was something hidden in those compliments. And that is what has given you this massive trauma around being praised. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It's like bad attention. Any form of attention has become a threat. You don't want to accept it. And there is this belief deep down, I'm a bad person, which is the narcissist's projection, the shame being projected on you. I do not deserve it. Don't focus on me. I don't matter. I just want to be invisible. I want to hide. This makes me feel uncomfortable. Don't talk about me. Talk about something else. It doesn't matter. No, it's not that big of a deal. Where does that come from? From that narcissist. They wanted you to feel small in order to feel big. They wanted you to diminish your light so that their darkness could stand out. Whenever somebody genuinely praises you for your work or something else, you play it small. You say, oh, it, it was sheer luck. It's okay. Let's not talk about it. They can see that discomfort. While some are empathetic, others, especially narcissistic individuals, see this as a trait to be taken advantage of. It gives them feedback. Oh, this person is other focused. They don't think about themselves much. That must mean they will sacrifice themselves if I were to get into a relationship with them and that is what they use against you later. Number seven and the last one, eleutherophobia, fear of freedom. After years of being controlled, you may develop a fear of personal freedom. You may become overwhelmed by the responsibility that comes with freedom because you were controlled and micromanaged by that narcissist. They decided everything for you. They structured your life and you got used to a particular pattern. Now that you are free of them, the world all of a sudden becomes a scary place. You do not know how to navigate it because somebody else did it for you. In the beginning you didn't like it but then it was forced on you and that is what became your way of being, of living in this world. Now you have to create your own path and that scares you, which is counterintuitive. A lot of survivors want that freedom, but when they get it, all of a sudden, they're paralyzed by it. They, they wonder, what, what do I do with it? How do I navigate it? Who is going to tell me what to do? Every step they take, they expect somebody to come in and say, you're, you're taking a wrong step here. That is not how it is supposed to be or do that thing this way because of the, the programming. If you are trying to take these steps, I will say, keep going. You will get used to taking control back. You will get used to living a new way of life. If you want to know how to overcome these fears and how to easily create this path for yourself, join my workshop. The topic will be how to heal after narcissistic abuse. The booking is on at an early, early bird prize. Link is in the description. Click the i button above. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.